Hello again everyone, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching today. I've already been online uh, chatting with a few people in the uh, text window. Um, so if you have some uh, other chat, go ahead and uh, put it in the window and I'll try to read it while I'm up here painting at the easel. Um, I have another computer behind me and uh, I can usually check it, but uh, sometimes I miss a few things. Anyway, welcome to the uh, watercolor uh, painting demonstration today. And uh, I've got two paintings lined up for you today. I think we'll have time to do both of them. Uh, I have one uh, from uh, a place in Montana called Como Lake, and uh, that's going to be our first painting. We're going to paint it in the landscape format. And then I have a second painting uh, called Mill Creek Canyon, um, and we're going to paint it in the uh, portrait uh, uh, orientation. So uh, I have those two sketches on my uh, board already, have the paper already done. And uh, I want to show you a little bit about what I did with the uh, photograph from uh, the Como Lake um, hike that we went on uh, actually a few years ago. It was uh, from 2011 we were there and a uh, very beautiful time of the year in June. Um, and uh, Como Lake is a beautiful place in Montana. Both of these paintings are from Montana. So uh, as you know, I spend uh, as much time as I can there and try to uh, capture as much scenery as possible. And I like to paint those uh, those landscapes. So uh, let me step over to my uh, computer here and I'll take you through just a couple of uh, photographs and show you what I did with the original photo on how to take a photo that's kind of uh, not perfectly aligned and try to show you how I aligned it and uh, cropped it a little bit and uh, I'm going to use that as our first painting today. So uh, let me step over there and I'll be right back. Okay, here we are. I'm at my computer now and we're going to uh, step into the uh, photos that I talked about. This first photo that uh, I used was uh, called, uh, actually this is the lake, Como Lake. It's a nice seven mile hike around this lake if you want to take the whole hike. Um, however, you can go about two and a half miles on a fairly level terrain and uh, it will take you to sort of a waterfall and a bridge and you can turn around and come back and only have about a maybe five mile hike out of it. So anyway, that's uh, sometimes what we like to do if we can find a way to uh, shorten the hike. Uh, getting older all the time, so uh, we try to do that. But this photo, if you noticed, is angled. It's sort of uh, cockeyed, as we like to say, maybe. Um, so the camera was not lined up perfectly with the horizon or with the back of the lake. So one of the tools I use is just picking a, uh, a program, a, most uh, computers have some sort of a program, a photo management program or a photo uh, editing program. And uh, so I just oriented it and, and rotated it about five degrees to the left. And uh, so I have my rotated photo here, which uh, allows me to paint this thing uh, in, a, in a level position, at least. I wasn't going to try to distort it and paint what I actually had on the photograph. So uh, I've had that and I've had that displaying for uh, maybe 10 or 15 minutes now on the channel. And uh, so it's on a 4x5 grid and we're painting on 11 by 14 watercolor paper again, uh, 300 pound uh, Fabriano Artistico uh, watercolor paper, cold press paper. And uh, as usual, I've done a value map and I use Photoshop for that uh, to kind of give me an idea where the darkest darks are going to be and the lightest lights. And I will try to adhere to that as much as I can. Um, and uh, if you notice, this kind of looks like a puzzle with interlocking pieces. That's really a, a good way to uh, try to break your photos down if you can use a tool like Photoshop and put a, put a layer, a transparent layer over the top of your photo and then sketch in uh, this sort of a value pattern and just look for big, big shapes. And uh, that's how I make my value patterns all the time. So. Uh, Here's the sketch. This is what's on my paper up there on the on the uh, watercolor board. And uh, this sketch, when I get the video edited after class, will be uh, out on my website. You'll be able to download it and use it if you want to paint this later. Um, so uh, let's get started here. I want to go back to my easel and uh, and we'll uh, take it off take off from there. <clears throat> Again, if you have any questions, uh, please type them in the uh, chat window and I will try to uh, pick up on them and, uh, and uh, give you some response back. 
Um, while I'm here, I want to go over my brushes and paints. Uh, this takes a little time, but I think in case you're a new person, uh, it's always a good idea to find out what I'm painting with and uh, what tools I'm using. So I have a, a Sterling Edwards palette and I have Sterling Edwards brushes. Um, and uh, I have these bristle brushes, a medium and a small. Uh, those are good for blending, good for putting on washes of color. I have a couple of flats. I have a one inch flat and a uh, half inch flat. I have about three rounds. I have a number 12, number eight, and number four round. And I have a, a script liner. And so those will be the brushes. I have a couple other smaller brushes over here I may use, but I may not use them at all. Uh, so I probably won't use all those brushes, but uh, I have them available. Let me go over the paints for you today. Um, I have a couple of uh, white and black here. This is uh, uh, titanium white and this is uh, ivory black. Um, or lamp black, I'm sorry, lamp black. I don't use those hardly ever, but they, they are there for in case I want them. Uh, but here's my darker colors. This starts out with a neutral tint. These are Mimary Blue transparent watercolors. And uh, I'll go back again. This is, this is a neutral tint, primary blue, cyan, ultramarine blue, ultramarine violet, crimson lake, primary red magenta, cadmium red, burnt sienna, raw sienna, yellow ochre, cupric green, sap green, limon yellow, primary yellow, burnt umber, still to grain brown and Auvignon orange. So all those paints are uh, the ones I use. That's my standard palette. And again, I may not use all of those, but at least I have them available. So uh, let me uh, camera zoomed in here and we will get started on this thing. Um, I think I can get it just about there. Let me take it down. I want to make sure you see the tape on the top and bottom so that you don't miss anything. Okay. So I got my uh, palette in the corner for you and uh, I think we're ready to go. So uh, I'm going to start off as usual by putting some some water on this using my uh, one and a half inch bristle brush here. Um, I've transferred this particular uh, sketch using my uh, Soral transfer paper um, and it leaves a, uh, a little bit of a residue on here that it's kind of hard. It, it shows up sometimes after the painting, uh, after you finish I don't like that, but I also have tried as a second way of doing it. I have my second painting a little bit later today. I use some pastel on the back of the tracing paper, and uh, I really don't like the way that uh, look. I mean, it, it, it's going to be uh, not as noticeable when I paint on it, uh, but it also is messy. Uh, I don't like messy paints. I don't like to uh, mess around with uh, a lot of... Uh, dust and I put pastel on the back of that paper and I had dust everywhere. And pastel is a good medium if you're painting outside. To me, I don't want to have it in my studio. Um, oil painting is enough, uh, has enough materials that uh, are hazardous and you have to mess with. So, Okay, so I've just wet this thing. I'm going to put a little sky back here, not much. The actual original photo had, uh, had uh, almost a washed out sky, really. And uh, See, I'm, uh, wow, somebody, Maxine Perry from uh, in Virginia, originally from Panama. Thank you for tuning in. Um, somebody's asking if I had a Sumi style brushes. I haven't tried those, uh, but uh, it's another kind of brush that uh, I've seen. I've seen people use, and uh, it might be uh, something I could try. I would probably experiment with it offline before I go online to try to uh, show you how something like that works. But uh, I see some very beautiful paintings come out of uh, people that use uh, Sumi brushes. Um, but uh, I don't use them. I try to stick to one, one type of brush if I can, primarily so that I can uh, kind of get some control over it and have uh, know how things are going to work, especially when I'm painting online for you guys. Uh, I don't like to have a lot of experimentation and unexpected uh, things. I'm putting some uh, ultra blue here in my palette. I'm going to just touch in a little bit of that in this sky up here. It's all wet and uh, don't have to do much. Just touch a little bit in there and leave some room for some clouds. Um, and uh, it's going to run and probably get over my mountains, which I 
try to keep from doing, but it um, doesn't take a whole lot to put a sky in like this. Uh, just let it sort of fade into the top of these mountains. Leave a little room for some clouds up there. Really light, really light, really fast. Don't keep going back over. If you keep going back in there, you'll uh, definitely get uh, get in trouble. Um, if you have too much water on your brush, you'll end up with uh, blossoms, and we don't like that. All right. Um, we've got a lot of that water down here in the. Uh, middle ground. I'm going to come back and put that in with a big brush a little bit later. Um, I'm going to start with now my uh, some of these mountains on the left side over here. I have uh, pick up some still to grain brown, still to green, still to grain brown. Uh, put a little sap green in there and see if I can get a color that sort of represents those mountains uh, over here. Whoops, I see an area where I left. Forgot some <laughs> We got some sky color. I'm going to come back with my uh, little brush here. Totally forgot this little area right here. It's almost dried in right now. It doesn't take long with this 300 pound paper. It doesn't take much to uh, absorb and uh, start drying out, especially in this studio here with these lights on it. Uh, I generate quite a bit of heat with these lights and uh, so I'm just going to Pop in here now some, some of this brownish color. Top of these mountains, they can be a little fuzzy. I got some green in them uh, from uh, vegetation that's growing up there, trees and that sort of thing. So put that down, put in a few areas here that are. Uh, wet on wet here so uh, it's uh, really blending and blurring and that sort of thing which is okay more greens in here just leaving some spots for some uh, rocks to kind of show through there in this part of the mountain and uh, I'm going to come down here on this right side here I want it to stand out by over what's behind it so that we don't have uh, too much um, same value, I don't want to have the same value showing up So I've got a kind of a funky color here that's being made from sap green and uh, still to grain brown. And uh, as they come down, they get more and more trees in them, a little darker. Um, and uh, I just want it to make this look like there's a whole bunch of trees out there. About this area, we have some more of those darker trees start showing up. And um, even in here, I've got some more. Hello, Louisa from South Africa. Welcome. Glad you're tuned in. I don't know what the time zone difference is, but certainly uh, I don't think it's the Eastern time zone in South Africa right now. Um, okay, so there's some uh, things that look like some trees. I got a few more darks in there. Um, that in, and as we come forward, we start getting some of the more more uh, grassiness here. Uh, so I'll just leave it, kind of leave it like that, maybe, and put in a few more 
things here, some areas there. All right. Um, the uh, grassy area here is actually has more uh, more yellow in it. I'm going to pick up some of my limon, limon yellow and then my sap green and see if I can capture that color. I may want to put some blue in that just to see if I can change the color of green a little bit. It has a almost a lime green look to it and uh, I'll see if I can find that color here somewhere between my yellows and blues. I have two blues and two yellows and uh, so that plus I have sap green and uh, I can make uh, see what happens here what that color looks like that's a little bit too light let me put in just a little more here there's a lot of green grass along here this area Painting with the side of the brush, um, picking up different colors, trying to make this um, not all one one color. Try to give it some variation. Put a little more blue in there, maybe. Well, we have somebody from Northern Ontario, Judy, and we have JHK from South Korea. Wow, welcome you guys. This is a real international show here today. Okay, here we go. Um, a lot of nice we in some darker spots here and there. Uh, this all comes down and it sort of merges with this over here. It does get a little darker as it comes down, but it's still a bright, sort of a bright green. Some areas of uh, I'm gonna leave some spots in there where we can have some uh, some ground showing or some uh, part of the mountain that doesn't have trees on it. Um, coming down now to the close to the edge of the water. This is the water line right here. So I'm gonna keep coming down here. Make sure I've got my. Am I going to go clear over to here? I've got to come up this way and put a few more things over this way. There we go. Just trying to follow generally the, the uh, rough outline of the photograph. We have another mountain that takes off and goes back up this way. Um, so I'll be putting something in there in a second few things to remind me to go back there and do that. Okay. So with the yellows that you have uh, and the blues that you have and the ochres, we can actually bring in some ochre and get some other kinds of uh, uh, green here. Uh, olive green. Usually you want an olive green. I throw some ochre in there. Uh, I don't know if there's a lot of olive green in here, but uh, we will throw in some th few things here that sort of change the color, change the tone. Uh, since I put that ochre in, I don't know if you can see that that well, but this is, ochre is more opaque. Even though these are primary blue transparent watercolors, um, yellow ochre has uh, an opaqueness to it that uh, they really can't get out, even in transparent watercolor. Um, so I uh, have to deal with that a little bit. I'm just putting in a few more things here to sort of blend this together. This is all just grassiness and some trees. There's a few trees. I've got a bunch more trees to come in along here. Uh, but um, that's pretty much what it is. Um, 
me see, I have a set of greens here that I'm going to make a little bluer in this area back here in this mount part of the mountain. Uh, and it goes all the way up actually to I'm making a little bluer because it is further back and the blue will help give me the illusion of depth. I don't know if you can tell there's much blue in that, but uh, I'm going to put it in there. I think it looks a little bluer back there. I've got some, I don't think it's snow, it's just the top of the mountain back there that you can see. I have a lot of green grasses over here coming down. If you ever get to uh, this area of the United States, uh, get to the Montana area, these are some beautiful uh, areas. There's a lot of beautiful hiking areas over there that uh, um, like to go back as often as possible. And uh, hopefully we're going to go uh, in a couple months again and uh, see, uh, see talk, and I forget what I'm doing. Over here. Okay, let's put a just change that color some more, uh, more darker blue in it. Even I want to push it back. So this is the case where I didn't start totally back to front. Uh, I actually started at the side. I'm kind of going back behind now where we were here and uh, the reason it looks like this mountain's behind the other one is because of the color change I'm making it slightly bluer as we go back and that my friends is how you help create atmospheric perspective and depth and I'm going to push it back a little more even. I'm going to pick up a little bit of my uh, alizarin, not alizarin, but uh, crimson lake and mix it in with this and see if I can get a little bit of a different color back here even. Okay, by just giving that a little bit of a, a reddish color, grayish, graying it down a little bit, um, I'm getting uh, some more distance in this. I have another mountain in here that I haven't even filled in yet. It's uh, got a lot of light color in it. Um, let's see if I can a few more of these colors bring this down into here um, I'm going to come back and have to put this big tree and some more trees in over here um, okay um, I'm gonna run going there if I'm not careful okay so I'm still painting almost like uh, puzzle pieces Let's see, Heather wants to know, do you ever change a color in a scene just because what's actually there is so bright and it looks fake on paper? Absolutely. Um, I, uh, I do that all the time, uh, especially when you're painting from photographs. Sometimes the photographs are very distinct and very uh, sharp. Uh, I mean, these digital cameras we have these days have uh, such, a, such an ability to uh, capture bright, bright colors. Uh, and uh, sometimes you need to dull those down a little bit. Uh, they look, uh, they do look fake on paper. Uh, so absolutely, that's a, a good, good tip, a good idea. Thanks for asking that question. Uh, because if you look at my photograph, uh, if I laid my photograph on here right now, I can't 
show it to you with a, a live shot, but uh, I will overlay it when I'm editing the video and let you see uh, see that uh, how much different uh, the photograph looks than the uh, painting I'm doing here. Let's see. I want to make sure I don't cover up my base. Right in here is the base. Okay. Uh, sure. There we go. Okay. All right, so I just made a lot of interesting little colors over there. Some of that's going to be covered over. Uh, it's going to dry out. I'm going to paint right over some of that. Um, but it makes a good backdrop. I want something behind uh, the, the trees and the, uh, the water and everything over here. Uh, and everything else is going to be darker in front of it. Uh, pick up a little brown in this and bring it down toward the bank. We have a water edge here that uh, I want to capture for you right in here and the bank kind of goes up that way I got a tree coming in there I'm going to cover that up so let's just leave it at that uh, well I got this lighter brown color in my brush I'm going to come back and touch in a few of these white spots that I've left open here Change a little bit. Um, so I'm uh, giving you back the uh, sort of the rockiness of the some of this uh, mountain back here in the background after that dried off a little bit. I'm able to kind of cover those up a little bit so it doesn't look like white paper. I don't want that to be totally white paper. Um, okay. Uh, there's a lot of little brown spots floating around in here. I'm going to just kind of hint at some of them. Uh, as we come down toward the water, they get browner and darker. So keeping that brown on the palette was a good idea. Like this. Okay. Now, um, let me see. That brown, that, I'm going to use that sort of brownish gray color back here in this area. It's got to be lighter than that. More water. Put a little bit there and then just kind of put some water on top of it to pull it out. Um, so I'm now painting mountains again behind what's there. Uh, Pull out a little bit of this color. I'm only using so far a half inch brush, folks. I don't know if you noticed that, but I haven't changed brushes since I started this thing after I put the water on. Uh, I've just basically been using this one brush. Uh, see if I can pick up just a little bit more here. It's a bit too dark, maybe, but I'll leave it in and come back with some bluish gray over the top of that. If I add some blue to that, Sort of gray it down a little. Another question. Uh, if the paper dries before you get to an area since you're doing wet on wet, would you wet areas and go into them? Um, yes, I do do that sometimes, uh, but I'm painting vertically here. And uh, I usually just come back and use my brush like I, ju I just did that here. I came back and put in a, a little bit of uh, water, clear water, because this paper is now dry over here. Uh, and uh, I wanted it to be softer, and I wanted it to be look wet on wet. So I did that. I came back with just clear water in the brush and uh, went back over them. Uh, so I'm just trying to show some more mountains back here in the background. So. That's really all I need to do right there, I think. It's a little bit darker than the sky, so you can see it. Uh, you can see them stand out, and I have some uh, interesting shapes here that look like they're puzzle pieces. And uh, it adds just a little bit of texture to the mountain back there. Um, okay. Yeah, well, definitely I'll put water. I'll re-wet this area here where the uh, 
water is in this painting. I will re-wet it when I get down there to, to get some nice uh, blended areas that I uh, want to uh, show reflections in. That's the best way to do that. Uh, I'm just putting in some, uh, basically putting in a few uh, abstract marks in here to sort of indicate there's stuff going on in these these mountains that's not just one bland color. Uh, pick up a few blues here maybe. How's it? Uh, definitely uh, it, it's an abstract or impressionistic way of painting. Um, I'm not trying to paint every tree that I see back there in the distance. I'm not even trying to paint a tree at all. Uh, I just sort of want to see that there's something going on. If I can use brush strokes to help pull down things in this mountain, you'll see that there's uh, something going on besides just um, pure grass. So um, let me pick up just a little more of these. I want to put a few things in this grassy area here. Um, Again, this is now all pretty dry, um, so I'm just going to uh, throw in some abstract shapes in here, and hopefully what you're seeing is that thing come to life. It looks like now that's a real, got real things growing back there, and there's some trees. I don't know what they are. I'm not making trees. I'm just making abstract shapes. Okay, I think that might be good enough for that. Um, let me. Another area here, this mountain looks kind of one color. Uh, I do have some other tones in there, but um, I just want to darken up some of those areas. Make sure that it's not the same value as the mountain in front of it. It has to be darker or lighter, one of the two. Uh, so I'm just going to put in some things there to show some shadows and that sort of thing. Over here we got similar things that uh, help uh, identify cracks and crevices and that sort of stuff. Um, as we come down here, some of this is going to pick up, we're going to get covered up. A lot of it's probably going to get covered up, but I'll go ahead and put these in and we'll give you some idea of how you would show the brush strokes in these mountains coming down this way. Uh, dry brush, I'm really just kind of dry brushing right over it with this color that's in my brush. And uh, so that's pretty much what I wanted to do there. Um, and what else? Okay, over here, let's look at this. I've got some darker now, more trees. I'm still using a half inch brush, folks. I haven't. Uh, given up on it yet. Um, take some more of my sap green and my blue and in here we've got a lot of, lot of trees. Finish this thing off. It's got to be darker than that. Get some more blue. I think I'll put a little uh, neutral tint in it to darken it up a little more because we're coming forward and as we come forward, we want this to be darker and more distinct. I can actually see the tops of pine trees back here sticking up. So I want to put that in, put in some more of the green, change the color so it's not all one tone. So now you're starting to see a few of these little uh, tops of the trees stick up here. And because I have that light background, the lighter color behind it, lighter value, um, they are standing out. You can actually see them. I'll just run a little row of things over here like that. Um, coming down to the water's edge, so I don't want to, I want to leave some room down there to put in a, a row of darks. Uh, 
So they're coming up here. They're, they're spotting around the different places. I'm putting a few more up in this area. Um, just using the edge of the brush and uh, trying to make these look like they are part of the landscape back there. Some more in here. That's good. Okay. Um, a few more darks in here. Maybe we'll throw in a few more. Get something darker than that. It's not quite dry yet. It's probably too soon to come in here and do this, but let me put in a few things here like that. And down here in the bottom, we're going to start getting really darker. More of my uh, neutral tint, more of my blue. I can even put a little uh, crimson lake in there that will really darken it down. If you want to get the darkest dark you can get without using black, use uh, a dark blue, a dark red, and a dark green. And uh, you can tint that to move it to any of those colors uh, by emphasizing one color over another. But um, you can really get some dark darks that way. Um, so I'm just going to come across here and throw in the uh, sort of some shadows that are under some trees here. And it really makes a dark backdrop for this part of the lake. Um, so once I get that in, that's a, a big part of this painting. Um, really makes a dark edge across there. All right. Um, leave some of that, come back and put in a few more. Um, again, I've got a light color here, and I put some dark over the top of it, and uh, I will start getting more depth in it. Every layer you can put on gives you more depth. So just abstract it in. Don't don't try to overdo it. Um, let's leave that. Okay. So now I've got this value here of this mountain and that behind it, or in that area right there, are getting to the point where you don't know which is which. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can make that a little more distinct. And putting in okay I think I helped that out to uh, identify whether it's darker or lighter there's a lot of shadows in here these mountains are putting shadows on each other so uh, um, it wouldn't be unusual to see something in that area that was pretty dark all right, where are we? Okay, I got water to do. I got some big trees in here and a whole bunch of trees over there. And that's about it. Um, all right, I think it's time now to put in this water. Um, let me see if I can clean out some of my palette here and get some of this stuff out of here. Okay. Everybody staying with me so far? All right, um, so now how do I put in the water to get a nice, soft, blended edge? I'm going to use clear water. I'm going to use my big one-inch brush. I'm going to re-wet all this area, all this area down here. I'm going to re-wet the whole thing. Uh, clear water and make sure my brush doesn't have any paint in it. Uh, come back. I'm going to leave just a very, like a small amount of space right under there, like one-eighth of an inch or so. Um, and... When I get that nice and wet, I'm going to go over it several times here. Because this paper, again, picks up, soaks in, and uh, you have to kind of go over it a couple times to get uh, 
to get it wet enough. So I've got water that goes, I've got a big tree right here, a couple trees, and there's water all around behind it. So I'm going to paint the water in and then come back and put the tree in over the top of it. I may have to use my hair dryer to dry it, but I want to make sure this is good and wet. Okay, now I've got a couple colors in this water. I've got the color of the uh, background that's reflecting in it and I've got the color of the uh, sky that's reflecting in it. So the sky color has been my blue, ultra blue, and what's reflecting in it is uh, the, the mountain that I've just been painting. So let's come across here and see if I can swoop in. This nice color blue back here. And some more. It's all the way over. I'm going to just run it all the way off there. Um, and it starts picking up some green in here from the mountains above. It actually picks up the green about right back here. More green, more yellow, pick up some blue, okay, because I wet that it's got a nice soft consistency there and uh, starts getting blue as we come out this way again. Uh, Nice and blue over here. All right. I don't know if you can see all that or not. Whoops, sorry. Um, has the blue over here. And uh, it's got that green. It's probably not dark enough. I probably need to put a little more in there. I've got to be careful uh, going in there too much and I'll get a, I'm gonna start getting blossoms if I'm not careful. I want to make sure that I don't get this uh, messed up because of that. So, uh, darker. As long as that paper is good and wet, that will that will uh, run and blend and blur together really nicely. Uh, and what's nice is you can actually use the the uh, the colors. If you don't get too much water in your brush, put some paint in your brush and actually pull down uh, some of these colors here. There's even a reflection of the uh, these little spots up here in the in the mountain are reflecting down. Something like that. Just pull down vertical strokes. Vertical brush strokes tell the viewer that this has got to be soft, calm water. Okay, and then I've got areas where I've got some reflections back there that I want to show. A couple of them. Not too much, just something like that. Um, and then I also have some some of this brownish color, which I've kind of gotten rid of. Um, it's sort of reflecting in here some places. It's starting to get too... Oh, let's see, I want to put some of this darker color down there, maybe. Like right in here, put in a few just a touch to sort of blend this together to show the bank reflections. Okay, not much, just a little bit there. Get rid of that white ribbon running across there. Okay, now I don't want to mess with that too much more at all. Um, I do have some darker colors I want to show up over here if I can find my area. I think it's like right in here somewhere. It's 
really reflecting that mountain back there. Um, all right, um, I think I'm going to hold off and say dry this thing now. So let me get my <clears throat> hair dryer out. I'm going to turn my microphone off so I don't blast your ears, and I'm going to dry this. Okay, that's fairly dry. Um, touch it with the back of your hand. <clears throat> If it feels cool, it's still wet. It feels the temperature of the paper, it's probably dry. I still feel a little wetness in there, so putting this tree in is going to be a little tricky. Um, but we're going to uh, go after it anyway. And uh, see if we can. I have to get a very, very dark. Make sure my microphone's back on. Yes. Very dark. I'm going to pick up some uh, burnt umber here and uh, maybe put a little bit of uh, neutral tint in there and maybe a little bit of blue in there um, and get out my half inch brush. Let's see, this thing goes way up there. So if I just start right here with my There's one part of that tree. Come back and put a little darker side on it, maybe. It's really dark. It has to be darker than that. Pick up some blue and put it in there. There's one one beside it that's a little bit lighter. Something like that. And pull out our script liner while we got these colors in here and start putting in some branches that sort of come out of it like this. Tons of branches here, folks. I'm not going to paint them all in. It'd drive you crazy if I spent all day painting those in. Uh, but we'll just put a few in here and there. Still get the message across. Come back and put some different kinds of uh, uh, tree, uh, not limbs, but uh, different kinds of pine needles and stuff on here. Um, that. Okay, um, over on the right side here I have several more that, uh, several trees that are sort of kind of laying in here like this. And even put in a few smaller and cross over. Okay, so there's a lot of branches going on here, both sides. Another tree back in here somewhere. Okay, um, the pathway actually comes around this way. I want to make sure these things are sort of locked into the path by just giving some color and texture there. There's the ground there that I want to hook them to. Uh, the path actually goes around this corner. Uh, all right, now let's see if we can get some 
I think that's fairly dry. I want to get now a bunch of <clears throat> a bunch of greens. Get my bigger brush here and see if I can make that work. Um, blue. I want to get a bunch of this blue. A bunch of this. Um, Trying to get some of this dark, dark green color here. Okay, so I'm working on this front tree now. And it's fairly dry, so I'm just going to use this big old brush and just kind of pop in some really dark stuff in here as much as I can. Okay. Darker the better, blues. Using the side of the brush, I'm not trying to paint every pine needle. I'm trying to make it dry brush and make it look very random and, and uh, make it look abstract. Things have little knobs sticking out on them like that. Very light and airy. You can actually see through some of these. Over here we got a bunch. Kind of hang down here like that. Um, don't have to put something on every branch, but certainly want to hit these where I can. The ones over here are going to be a little bit lighter because their sun's kind of hitting them some way. That top, very top, top has to be darker than what's behind it. So let's pop that thing up there a little darker. Okay. Something like that. Um, there is some dark leaves in this area. I'm going to put a few of those dark, dark right now. And I'll come back and cover this up and pepper it up with more. I've got some trees that even hang over up here. I've got some, you can't even see the, you can't even see the uh, trunks for those up there, but they're hanging over and so I'm going to try to hit them and uh, bring it in this way, like this. A little bit too much water in there, thin it out. All right, now it starts changing its color. So let's get some yellows in there, bring in some of this uh, primary yellow and uh, start putting in some more of these branches here. This thing all just sort of runs together. There's tons of trees back in here and uh, I'm gonna fill this in with trees in the background and cover up most of that mountain back there. But I wanted you to see that mountain exists. Um, and uh, you see the brush strokes I'm using? I'm just sort of punching from the sides, from the edges. Uh, this, uh, I'm not trying to paint trees. I'm just trying to give you impressionistic abstract shapes back there. So it looks like that's all connected. Um, I'm going to put in some more bright green or bright yellow, I guess I should say, if I can get some clean yellow on my brush. And we'll come in here and throw in a few of these like this. There's more um, Where the sun's hitting those things, they're they're really bright. So I want to show you some of that. <clears throat> and uh, hopefully that will just about do it. Um, I could spend some more time up in here messing around with these, put in a few more yellows to brighten that up. Um, could be brighter back there a little bit in some areas. 
Um, but there's tons of trees. You can actually use your back of your brush here and put in some things that look like trunks to make it look like there's some trees back there. Very quick, very fast. Don't do a lot of it, but uh, just pop it in there. Um, in this area here, I want to put in some more using the flat side of this brush and just getting very light and airy uh, things sticking off of it here um, by using, actually I'm using the back side of it um, in here. I don't want to do too much. I'll end up overdoing it, but there has to be some, some light yellows in here because the sun is still hitting on this area. Okay. Um, Take a look at that. I think I'm going to say stop. Um, see if I can put my name on here very quickly and we will move on to the next painting. Okay. There we go. Um, use my paper towel and clean this thing out. <clears throat> I want to go back over to the computer and uh, hope you like this painting. I hope you can give this a try. And uh, take a look at it there while I clean my palette. <clears throat> Get ready for another painting. Uh, Okay, so much for that. Clean out my brushes. I've got a lot of greens in these brushes. I want to get that green out of there. So that came out pretty good. I can actually probably put a few more darks in here maybe to highlight that a little bit, but I think I'm going to leave it for you you to finish up in your imagination, however you want to do it, and uh, I want to move on to my next painting. Okay, we've been going just about a little over an hour, uh, and a little less than an hour actually painting time on this one. Let's see, get this guy off of here. Make sure I don't pull my board apart. Take this off and there we go. Okay, so there's that painting, folks. So uh, consider that one done. I might touch it up a little bit, but basically that's a pretty good representation of the uh, of the uh, original photograph. It's a lot lighter, a little bit different color as you can see, but it has an airiness that the original photograph doesn't have. You can see through those trees, you can see the water. So, let's set up for my next one here. Um, my next one, I'll take down my uh, paintings here, my, my uh, photographs rather, and put up my value sketch. And uh, it's hard for you to see that, I'm sure. Um, I'm gonna walk over to the computer and we will go back through here the other photograph. Okay, so I'm back at my uh, computer and I want to show you the photograph um, that we started with. This is uh, called Mill Creek Canyon and um, <clears throat> I took it in uh, portrait format or yeah, portrait format. This is representative of the kind of canyons that we hike in in Montana. Big granite cliffs on both sides. In this case, we're down in the uh, canyon itself. And uh, there's a creek that runs there. And I particularly uh, <clears throat> didn't like the canyon on the right side. I wanted it on the left side, so I flipped it. So the flipped version here is uh, basically just rotated horizontally in your, in your uh, program that uh, manipulates um, photographs and uh, you can flip it any way you want to. Um, so that's it. Um, I had a 
picture of it with the grid on, and this really is a 3x4 grid because it's a portrait format. And uh, so it still fits on my 11 by 14 canvas pretty well. There's a little bit of uh, differences. I had to cut off a little bit of the sky and a little bit of the foreground. But um, I did my uh, value map and uh, the little white section here in the foreground is basically the path of the hiking trail that goes in and along these, uh, these cliffs. And uh, very beautiful. You're constantly looking up, hardly it's hard to uh, hike without looking at the, the canyons on both sides and uh, sometimes you trip and fall around when you're doing that but it's a beautiful area. So after my value sketch uh, I did the uh, normal sketch and this sketch was done with tracing paper and on the back of the tracing paper I used some uh, uh, dark charcoal uh, pastel color rather uh, pastel sticks and uh, I put it on there and basically use that to do the transfer and it's a not as clear as sharp um, a sketch as we would have um, with using the transfer paper but um, it's a pretty good sketch nevertheless and uh, that's what we're going to be working with so I'm going to uh, flip back over now to my easel and uh, head back over there and we will start on this painting <clears throat> Any questions? Okay, um, let me uh, get this thing zoomed in for you here. And now this is going to leave some edges on the side because I can only zoom in about right there. So you can still see everything. It looks like I've got it put on just a little bit crooked on the paper. But um, that happens sometimes. Uh, Okay, um, you probably can't see that sketch at all uh, very well, uh, but I want to uh, start out, and this is sort of a nice gray color all the way through it. It's got some nice interesting colors of gr grasses in the side, a few trees on the, uh, the upper part of the cliff here. Uh, uh, it's all gray granite here. It's got an interesting, beautiful little blue sky. So uh, I'm going to get my uh, clear, clear brush here, my... Uh, not my clear brush. I want to uh, see. Get my uh, palette set up here, and uh, clear water using this um, bristle brush. Let's start up here. Just work our way down. Matthew Ahrens would like to know what a value map is. Ah, okay, well, um, a value map is basically take a photograph, take something you want to paint, um, and try to get the thing into three values, dark, medium, and light. Sometimes I make four values out of it, but usually uh, three values will work. And when you see that value map that I had up there, um, I only had like three or four colors, three or four values in it. So if you can take any photograph and make a almost like a, a cartoon sketch out of it, make the big shapes that you're going to be painting and figure out how you want those. What do you want in the background? What do you want in the middle ground? What do you want in the foreground? And, and how do you want those to be defined? So a value map just says, where do I want my three values? And if you can get a painting to fit in a three value pattern you will have a good chance of having a successful painting and uh, it also helps you uh, to force yourself to simplify a lot of the uh, of the painting because you have to get it into three values you have to look at big shapes you can't be fiddling around with every little tree and every little branch and every little uh, uh, pine needle or whatever that you see in the painting so uh, it, it's a good it's a good tool that way um, so I always use Photoshop and I've had on some of my other watercolor videos you will see uh, I give a little explanation on Photoshop of how I actually create that from a photograph how I create the the, the big big value uh, sketch of the big uh, shapes and also how I uh, uh, make the value map out of it and uh, I know I've I think I've I've uh, recorded that on several 
videos, at least three maybe that I can think of, um, that I've actually put the process I used to do that. Um, so check out some of my other watercolor videos and you'll probably find uh, one maybe a couple months ago that I think I did that on. I have at least one watercolor video per month because I'm doing these classes once a month and uh, um, putting in some uh, ultramarine here for the sky. Um, we're going to come down in this area here and leave some room for some clouds. A uh, bit of blue up here. Okay, again this thing runs and softens off and makes a, a nice uh, set of uh, colors here. In this area I got some blue. A lot of big color, a lot of big clouds in this particular day. Uh, this particular area of Montana has uh, hikers uh, not hikers as much as uh, rock climbers are coming out of the woodwork to climb in this area. They just climb, they love to climb these uh, granite rock surfaces. And uh, so um, it's becoming quite an interesting area. This is not far from uh, an area called uh, Hamilton, Montana. And uh, a lot of uh, a lot of tourists go out there. I want to stop on that sky. If I keep messing around, I'm going to make it worse. So, uh, Matthew, I hope that uh, answers your question about the value map. And if you give a check out a few of my other watercolor videos, you'll see uh, how I did that. Um, okay, so let's take. Uh, I'm going to take my uh, burnt sienna. some burnt sienna here. I start out with this uh, one inch brush. I put the water on the paper. I'm using a one inch bristle brush and I'm going to get myself some blue to mix with that and when I mix blue and burnt sienna I get a gray. Amazing how that works. If I mix it with a darker brown I get a darker gray. But this burnt uh, Sienna has enough, uh, some nice colors in it which start looking like granite, which is what I'm really trying to uh, get here from this uh, particular painting. So let's start with that and see how that looks when I put some of that on up here. And yeah, that's pretty close. I've got a little brown in my brush, I've got a little of that burnt sienna in the brush, uh, and so I've, I'm getting a gray that looks like it might be a granite mountain. And as I pull down, I can those colors sort of mix on the brush and in the paint because it's wet on wet. So let's just put in a this area here comes down like that. This might be a fast painting. I don't know. I'm going to see how abstract I can keep these shapes and uh, keep coming down here like this. Really goes all the way down. Um, so I'll just put the whole thing in in gray here. Change the color a little bit. Get a little different. Uh, the different tones in there. I'm going to cover this up with some uh, a lot of uh, trees so we'll just let that go here and there's a big uh, gray rock slide here. We were in Montana at a different hiking trail than this uh, a few, few years ago. Um, and uh, we were coming up to the trailhead. We drove up to the trailhead and got out of the car and there was a whole bunch of uh, rescue vehicles at the trailhead. And uh, we had to give our name, address, and they had a tent set up and a computer set up. 
It turns out they were looking for a climber who had climbed one of these granite cliffs in this area. Not this one, another one. Um, and he never came back. They couldn't find him. So there was a big rescue search on for this guy. And uh, so we left our information with the rescue tent and the whole idea was in case we came across something suspicious or if we came across um, the person they were looking for they weren't sure what happened to him uh, but uh, they were asking everybody who was taking a hike along this canyon to uh, look be aware look in places that you would normally look to see if they could find this hiker. And uh, before we finished our hike, there were helicopters overhead and they were going around the top of these mountains and uh, they had a place set up on the top. And uh, turns out we found out later in the day that they actually found his body at the bottom of one of these, uh, one of these places that uh, he had tried to climb by himself without a backup, without having harness or anything to protect him. He just tried to climb it freehand by himself in the evening after work one day and he uh, didn't make it. Um, so these places are serious and are dangerous and uh, they can be scary if you're trying to climb a, a rock face. So I'm just kind of putting in here uh, some changes of color darkening up some areas. Uh, there is a, a shadow that's coming down here. Um, so I'm just trying to continue this granite look with my color of gray. Um, and uh, there is some, some greens in here in some areas, uh, but I'm going to uh, I think this is the one tree. I want to make sure I leave an area here that's sort of carved out. Um, I don't want it to be totally painted in. That's that's a big tree that goes out of the top of the painting. So uh, I want that, and I've got a couple of others over here that I want to sort of leave some clear paper with there. Okay, and then um, this area here. Uh, let me get a little darker uh, neutral tint. Uh, ultra blue and let's see if we can put in some of this rock slide here and there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes down here I'm sort of just painting around some tree trunks that I want to leave in here. And the paper's starting to dry off. I can see it. Okay. Um, I'm going to come out here and pull a little more. A little sharper there than it was. It was sort of fuzzy from the wet on wet. I want it to be a little sharper. So let's put in a few more things up here, darken it down just a little. Notice I'm trying to leave an abstract shape here. I'm trying to keep it from being just rectangular or boring. 
uh, if I can. Okay. So all that's been done with this big one inch bristle brush. So I can get some nice soft blends with it by pulling up. Um, I did that here a little bit below with paper towel. Um, and it picks up, picks up the paint because it's got these bristles in it. Uh, let's see, I got a brush over there. Okay, so this, I think it's uh, time to stop and do some drying here. I'm going to get my hair dryer out and uh, turn my microphone off so I don't blow your eardrums out. And we will dry this painting. Okay, I should be back online. All right. Um, I don't know if you noticed that, but I had a piece of white paper here that covered part of this because it was sticking out underneath my landscape paper that I had in front of this, so I didn't want to get this paper cut dirty. Um, and I'm just trying to decide if I came down far enough with my um, this rock slide area here. I don't know if I did, but I may have to come back and do that. All right, let's uh, get in here and see if we can put in some of these trees. This is dry now. I'm going to put in a few of the pine trees that are back there in the background and uh, pick up some of my uh, sap green, a little bit of my blue, ultra blue and uh, see if we can start putting in some of this area back here that's uh, got a lot of interesting trees. It's somewhat in shadow, uh, but it's also got some areas that are not in shadow. So we're going to come back and got room for a tree to stick in there. Maybe a few more. Um, some light green or some trees that kind of sit over here that are sort of a, they're getting plenty of sun, so they're basically uh, sticking out up there um, in some areas um, like that. I'll throw a few back here. Come back and get some of this darker color. Mix it up. Uh, I want to sort of blend this in with the landscape. I don't want it to be hard edges back there. I don't want these to be hard edges over there. So I'm going to sort of use my one inch brush. You can take this brush and just get, keep it damp, clean and damp, and you can actually make some very nice things like this. This look like a ton of trees up there. Um, There are some more. There's a big tree coming down this side over here. I want to get a, a lot of dark in there. Blue, neutral tint, sap green, neutral tint uh, over here. So it's uh, and we'll just sort of connect him to the ground like that. Uh, just a couple of swipes with this bristle brush. That's all it takes. Um, got a lot of other rockiness in here and some other trees floating around. I'm going to come back and just put in some more of these trees and. See if I can get the dart to go in here. I've got a tree that I want to put through there, so I'm going to shade some little dark, smaller trees going up there. Let's 
So you can see those because I left that area light behind it. You can see the, the trees back there. And pick up some more of this lighter color, change the color a little bit. I put in some trees that might be getting in the light out here. I don't know. They're actually not this numerous out there, I don't think. I'm, I'm kind of painting it more than more than I should. I just touch them up like that, pull together, get a nice variation in color. Clean my bristle brush. Okay, now got some more. I got a few dark ones floating over here in some areas. Not too many. Um, let's see down here. I've got okay. These are coming down. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna put in some uh, marks from this granite here again. I've got to go back and get some more of that, making up this uh, granite color. And in here there's actually some horizontal things that make it look like there's some, either a shadow, there's a shadow coming over this way. Um, The sharp. I think it's actually up here further. And uh, coming into some areas that actually have creases and cracks in this granite. <laughs> there are some up there too, but I'm going to probably leave some of those out. Uh, and again, I can soften those. If I don't want them to be quite so hard, I can just sort of run this bristle brush over them and it will take some of the hard edge off of them. Uh, and this brush I'm putting it in with is uh, has a very hard edge on it. And uh, so I'm just trying to get some rockiness, something that looks like rocks out here. Take the side of the brush and just pull it back over here on this side and pull some over this way. So the technique is just use the back of the brush and just sort of make horizontal swoops with it like that. And if they get too dark, and I think some of these might be a little too dark, come back with this bristle brush and just sort of lighten them a little bit. So I'm giving that wall, that granite wall, some texture something that looks like it might be uh, rough and hard to climb. Shadow, there's a shadow that and it comes over here on the other side of this tree, a little darker. This whole area is kind of in shadow. So I'm just sort of wiping out something, what I've already done there by putting the shadow back in, but I um, think that's important to help get the three-dimensional look of this thing. There we go. All right. Darker. I can always come back and put some more of those uh, horizontal marks in there to uh, another glaze over it if I want and darken it down a little bit. Very lightly. Okay, so let's see if how that's looking. All right, now I've got a bunch of trees in here that uh, <clears throat> fit in this area. And they come down to this rock pile down here. So I'm going to go back and get my bigger brush, one inch brush. And just since this is all nice and dry, I'm going to uh, see if I can 
pull in there's a dark dark keep it very dark so there's a couple of different kinds of trees I'm going to make another one over here that's a little bit different color and uh, add some darks in there bring it down kind of connect it to this one a little bit so we don't have it's always a good idea to try to print paint in clumps of trees if you can um, so you have multiple trunks going up here and, and then you can just sort of put in the uh, the uh, all the branch of uh, the branches and the uh, pine needles and that sort of thing here um, something like that um, a little bit of grass here we've got some of this grass comes down into this rock pile here comes over here on the other side of this tree so I'm just putting in these some of these grasses here dry brush and uh, take it back this way put some over here and there's probably a couple more trees in there I could throw in on the left of this. So let's put in a couple more here like this. Maybe a little shorter. And connect it up there. Let's do that. Just It's simple. Don't try to paint every tree you see. Don't try to paint every branch. Uh, something like that. Uh, a lot of grasses down here. Connect these bottoms. Don't leave these trunks hanging out. You got to connect them to the to the ground below. This little brush just sort of does wonders. Okay, now. Um, I've got some of these darker trees I could throw in maybe if I uh, get my round brush out here and get some of this brown ultra um, burnt umber and uh, maybe put a little blue in it to gray it down a little bit so it's not totally brown but um, in here we've got uh, several tree trunks. This guy here is a big one. I'm going to just pop him in right here. Left a little hole for him right there. If you noticed. Um, got a few more here I'm going to pop in back in the back. Now those are a couple of short ones. I'm going to put in a might be one or two more back here. Okay, so I'm just trying to hit this so that it looks like I've got some trees that are sort of dying off or have died off maybe something like that um, a couple of dark ones here let me see if I can put in these guys they're pretty tall there and I gotta make this one a little bit grayer this guy goes all the way down to here Okay. Don't want these ends to be I want them to go into something. I want them to to uh, hook into the ground or hook into the the 
this is sort of a grayish color here. I don't think it's that's very gray. Let's get a little more gray in there. There's one. There's another right there. Sort of have. I think there was even one that was a brighter color right here. So I'm not painting every tree that you see. I'm not painting every uh, branch or whatever. I am trying to put in these things that uh, get some dry uh, dry brush here and sort of this thing goes all the way off the top of the paper and bring them down that way leave some a little bit lighter Okay, so we have a lot of stuff going on here now. I still want some more, some more trees um, in this area here. I want some more trees. There's some using my half-inch flat here. Probably should use my round brush instead. Put in a couple of things here, a couple over here. Then I want to come back and put in my, since this is now I'm doing, I'm really painting now uh, wet on dry. So just pop in some interesting shapes here that look like pine trees and uh, sitting out here. There's actually a couple of pine trees sitting out here. One there, and there's one lighter one down here, a couple of them. May not be able to see all of that. Okay, good progress here. So see how I tied those bottoms into the landscape? I just used this wet, damp brush and just scrubbed the bottom of them. That's one way to do it. I want some of this other color in there. So I'm just putting in some more gray here that kind of represents the uh, the bottom of this rock slide. Got a bunch of there is a bunch of bushes and stuff in here that I can put in. I haven't got those in yet, but um, we'll see. If I can get that in. Where's the path? I want to make sure I don't cover up my path. I got too hard of an edge right there. I can use these bristles and just sort of soften that edge and pull that together. I don't know if you caught
caught that or not, that that's what I was doing, but uh, make the, any brush strokes you leave, make them look like they're going down to the path because that's really what is going on here. This is all part of this mountain granite. I notice you can't see the bottom of the painting here now. That's what my that's what the problem was. Okay. Now we got some leave some room in there for that. Um, we got some more grasses and shrubs and stuff going on here. Script liner here and pick. I got another tree trunk over here on the right side that's coming in. Let's see if I can pull him in like this, like that, and pick up some of these dark colors and put in a few. There's that. Uh, this big tree here in the middle I put in has some tons of branches on here, but I'm not going to paint them all. Nice crooked branches. These trees are probably dead. And blend in the trunks so they match. Um, see another set of trees over there that I want to put in. Um, in this area, we've got another set of Down here we got a bunch of bushes and stuff going on. This is just some of the uh, grasses, or not grasses, but shrubs and stuff that are growing along this path. Sometimes you have to hike through them. I'm going to put some here like this that are on both sides of this tree to help pull this tree out. Same thing over here. If I put it in between, you'll see those trees pop out. some lighter colors, mix in some yellows in there. Okay, so I'm just putting another layer on here that's got uh, Some darks, mixing some darks and lights together. Of 
very abstract, very loose. This is probably one I could do with my left hand if I wanted. Make it loose and simple. I don't know, let me try it. <laughs> See, you got me thinking about painting with my left hand now. I said I wasn't going to do it live. Look at those nice little interesting shapes I'm getting without even trying. Left-handed painting, folks. I wasn't going to do it, but I changed my mind. Thank you. Forget your name, but I think you said you were from Ukraine, if you're still with me. Thanks for the tip. It's a good thing I don't have to actually paint anything really detailed, because I am right-handed. right, right, <clears throat> right But uh, that's a good tip. Okay, let's get some stuff around here, around the bottom of this tree. Where's my wet brush? Back of the... This thing does a wonderful job too, just putting in some textures. So our hiking path is like right here. You just barely see it, but we're going back in, in behind these trees. And uh, this uh, this is imposing when you hike in these areas. Uh, these cliffs just dwarf you. You are such a small piece of the landscape when you're out there. Um, it's just uh, breathtaking, usually. We really enjoy some of these areas in Montana. Okay, there's some stuff. Come back and get a few more bushes here. I do have a couple of logs I'm going to paint in down here. I've left room for those. And uh, mix some darks, get some dark blues in here behind the, the greens. If you can get a couple values, two or three values in here, you start giving yourself a lot of, a lot of texture and a lot of... Uh, it really makes the painting very interesting. So you can you see the log that's going to be there. Logs there, got a tree there. Okay, um, what else? There's a lot of stuff I could put in here. I could keep working on this for quite a while if I want, but I'm, I don't want to keep, keep you much past 3 o'clock, and we're getting close. Um, but Right here, I've got some area that, since I put that lighter color in there, I can actually show you my, I think I'm going to leave that path totally white. Oh, I had another log over here I wanted to put in. Okay, let's go back and see if we can put in a couple logs. Get my round brush out, get my burnt umber, and A little bit of burnt umber and a little bit of water on the brush and see if I can put in the bottom of this log here. I'm leaving a little bit of highlight there so you can see the top of that log. There's another log that kind of goes in like this. These are actually trees, and they actually, when they maintain this park area, these hiking trails, they actually come in and use chainsaws and cut these things 
so that there's the hiking trail is not covered. Uh, so you just kind of leave these things laying all over the place. You have to sometimes you got to step over them, but usually they're they're just in a in the area where you're hiking, and um, you just gotta, gotta walk around them. Okay, there I want to put in another little. There, I didn't like the way that was looking. Okay, um, there are some other trunks and things sitting up here. They're just sort of left over. I don't want to leave all this area totally nondescript, but uh, putting in a few things like that just sort of help fill in this area. Typically they come down and helps also tell you what how the land is laying when I do that. Uh, over here the land is kind of flatter down here so uh, these logs are sort of laying this way. Okay, so that's the kind of hiking trail that we like to hike. A little shadow on the side of this tree here. Make it stand out just a little bit more. Maybe a few more little uh, branches or whatever here in some spots. Fill this in a little bit. These things all have dead branches on them. Um, so it just kind of helps fill in some of these areas that are uh, bland and nondescript. Uh, Over here, we've got some trees that are finish that guy out. Okay, looks like a lot of trees. Looks like some nice areas you could want to hike back in there. Um, hopefully, that's the way it's designed to look. Put a few more bush things in here. Let's get this just. A little bit more filled in so it doesn't look like it's just one bland color. Shadows underneath, darker underneath. Heather, may I share the name of an artist who's well known for using both hands? Sure. Who would that be? And check him out if he's on YouTube. Okay, I'm just kind of finishing up some fine touches here to kind of make it look like there's more bushes and more trees and more stuff growing back here. Okay, folks, I think I'm going to say let's stop on this and uh, back, zoom back just a little. And uh, this tree looks a little <clears throat> goofy right here. Um, let's see if I can step back, just kind of define it just a little better in some of these areas. And just sort of, they are closer, a little bit closer, so I would. Expect them to be a little well more well defined. These for sure. I'm just touching in a little bit of a brown off the edge of this brush. Okay, um, I'm thinking if I got a dry spot to put my name, I'm going to sign this job, and we will uh, end up. What do I do with my? There it is. Right in here, probably. I think it's fairly dry. Block print my name. It's going to look like some more logs setting out there. All right. 
I think. I'm going to zoom back and say, hope you like these two paintings today. I hope you give them a try and uh, let me know how you do. Um, I will be editing this video and I'll have it on um, my uh, YouTube channel as a new video. You can always watch the uh, replay of this uh, the streaming version uh, anytime. It stays out there for quite a while. But uh, I will uh, redo it and take out some of the glitches and maybe clean up the where the palette is uh, laying on the painting so far and periodically. And uh, I think that's all I want to say today. Uh, check out my website if you haven't been there. Check out my Facebook page. Uh, refer me to your friends. Have them subscribe. I'd like to get a few more subscribers. And uh, I'll keep painting third, uh, third Wednesday and fourth Wednesday of every month is my plan. And uh, so until I see you again, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Goodbye.